Competition is everywhere, plus things I like and dislike from practice so far. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome back to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I am your host, Ryan Herrings. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager from your small business. That's why LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's get right into it. Competition is everywhere. So fall practice, we're, we're um, several practices in here at Platteville. Platteville just actually wrapped up. Uh, the practices at Platteville wrapped up. And what do I really like about this? What have I liked so far that we've seen, and what do I kind of dislike? I want to start here. Competition is everywhere on this team right now, and I think in the best of ways. The Let's start at receiver. We've talked about receiver a ton. We're not going to break it down into in, individual names right now because this is a, a, bigger, a bigger picture topic here, but the competition at receiver is incredible. And you're talking Bryson Green, who is coming into his own. You have C.J. Williams, D.K., Keontes Lewis, Skylar Bell, Will Pauling, and they're all competing. That's six guys right there. Six. You have six legitimate guys competing for reps, and they're not all going to get the reps they want. That's good. Like, not only does that that give you in injury insurance, right? You want to be self insured. You don't want to have to go out and find a. Um, a creative way to solve an injury reduced position, right? The Badgers are self-insured at receiver right now, which is great, but there are six guys legitimately competing. And that's not even talking about the guys we feel good about in the pipeline down in the minor leagues, right? Obviously they're not in the minor leagues, but to use a baseball reference, there's a lot of guys coming up through the system in the next couple of years that we're excited about as well. But those top six at receiver, when you they're like we feel really good about every single one of them to, to different degrees and everyone kind of ranks them differently right um but i feel really good about the competition at receiver how about the competition on the defensive line with darian varner coming back now you're starting to get uh, thompson rodis johnson varner neil uh potentially jamel howard uh you have isaiah mullins um, you know that again, there's six, seven, eight bodies that are starting to compete. How about at cornerback Hallman, Alexander, you got kind of at those starting edge positions, Maytree in the slot, but now behind them, you're starting to see, um, Forkren, the, the transfer come over. They had just landed Mac. Who's already in the two deep Max Lofi is still in there. You're seeing already reports of Amari Snowden making some plays. Jace Arnold was in the two deep in the spring. Again, just competition everywhere. And it's so good. And you see it in the one-on-one. So the, the Badgers coaching staff has put these one-on-ones up. And you can see film of it out there where defensive end competing against offensive tackle, just one-on-one competition, cornerback against receiver. And you know the, everyone's around them. And it's a lot of hype. It's a lot of excitement. And again, it just speaks to the competition everywhere. You're seeing it on the offensive line. A bunch of really highly recruited players, high pedigree players battling for that too deep, right? There's, there's, recruiting stars everywhere on that offense line. So that competition's going. You're seeing the competition at the the backup running back spot behind Ches Malusi, you know, between um Joseph, Joseph Acker and Kade Yacamelli. It looks like Acker's ahead of that. So competition everywhere, it's good. It's good for the program, but it's exciting to be to be this seemingly deep at a lot of positions that Wisconsin has historically struggled with, right? We feel deep at cornerback right now. A little a little unproven in spots, but we feel deep. We feel deep at receiver. Again, a little unproven at spots, but we feel deep. I think there's a lot of bodies on the defense line. I still wonder if there's a difference maker. We're going to get into Darian Varner in a second here, getting back to practice coming off an injury. Um, but I feel like that's a deep position as well. Inside linebackers, deep. Outside linebackers, deep. Let's talk safety. I love the competition that's boiling up at safety. You have uh, Travion Blaylock coming back from an injured year last year. He is a physical freak show. Blaylock can move. He's physical. He's big. Uh, you have Hunter Wohler, who's primed to be one of the stars of this defense coming into his own. You know, it's not a Hunter Wohler has struggled with kind of nagging injuries for a bit in his, his first two years in Madison. If he puts it together this year, it's it wouldn't shock me if that's his last year in Madison. He has those type of physical tools to leave early to the NFL. Size, instinctual, hitter. Um, and then you also have Kamoi Latou, who we, we know how physical he is. So there's three guys right there. And then behind him, you still have Austin Brown, 
You have um, Owen Arnett, who, who has really showed out. You know, so again, competition everywhere at safety, at corner, at linebacker, at defensive line, offensive line, receiver, uh, even at the quarterback spot. You know, you have multiple guys kind of vying for reps there that are highly regarded with Evers um, not not being able to really crack into that upper echelon group yet. But you have uh, Locke behind Mordecai. You still have Miles um, Burkett battling there. So that's the first thing I really like when we're talking about what do we like and what, what do I like and what do I seen from practice so far that's exciting. The first one is just competition everywhere. Depth in a lot of places that Wisconsin has historically struggled with. That stuff's awesome. All right, let's get into more things that I like. Bryson Green, he is he just looks the part, right? We talked about him on a previous show with Justin. I don't, I, you can't help but not be excited to see Bryson Green out there running routes, being physical, getting the ball between two defensive backs. He just looks the part, and he's he looks like the type of receiver Wisconsin hasn't had in a couple of years, right? Going back to we talked about Cephas. Uh, he's probably even a little bigger than Cephas. Yeah, so if we're talking about things that have gotten me excited through the first portion of fall practice, Bryson Green is at the top of that that food chain there. Let's talk um, Amari Snowden playing corner. This is this is what's an offseason discussion we've had with myself, uh, Justin, Rajiv, John Garcia Jr., Brian Smith, a lot of people. Um, he's playing corner right now, which – and playing corner and seemingly making some plays here and there. One of the points I made uh, when the show with Justin is this is a guy who, even if he doesn't play a lot, potentially because of his unique size, you could find some packages for him, which makes sense. Maybe in the red zone against a, a jump ball threat against a tight end. Um, the fact that he's playing corner already, he's made some plays. Listen, he's got to he's got to climb so, so a depth chart here, right? Uh, it's not going to happen. Over, excuse me, it's not going to happen overnight, but. I wouldn't rule out seeing him in, in some limited roles in packages this year because he's just such a unique athlete with such a unique wingspan. So that's exciting to me. Darren Varner coming back. This one is super exciting to me. So let, let's let's just be real. Pass rush is a concern on this team, right? It just is. When you lose Benton and Herbig and the returning players don't have much pass rush production, pass rush is a concern. Darian Varner was brought in specifically to help address that. Coming out of Temple, seven and a half sacks last year. We talked about it, and he's been banged up. He's been hurt. Having him come back in practice, and uh, honestly, there's a report that he, in one of his first reps, he bullied up on Jack Nelson and got by him. And if he's if he's doing that to Jack Nelson, that is a very good sign, Badger fans. That is a very good sign. So him coming back is really exciting for me. That's a good one. So those are some of the things I like. It's the competition, and then it's some dudes starting to show out. Varner coming back. Renfro coming back from injury. Obviously, Bryson Green looking like a guy. Tanner Mordegai getting more consistent. Lots of things here that I'm starting to like from practice. Um, coming back, we're going to talk about a few things I don't like that I've seen or heard of. And then AJ, AJ Store. Let's, let's talk some hype here with AJ Store and something that he did recently. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at LinkedIn. Um, and every day um, when you're making hires, your small business, it feels like a high stakes wager to bring the right people in. You can't afford to mess it up. You can't afford to make mistakes. You have to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. And it's something I've used to expand my personal network as well. It's an incredible tool for networking, for professional development, for hiring resources. They have screening tools. We've talked about it. You put all the candidates into the spaghetti strainer. Only the good ones stay. Everything else gets out of there. That's what their screening tools do. Right, um, Get the right people in at the right time so you don't have to waste time interviewing people. have no business being there. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs. Number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's keep this going. I really do appreciate, uh, I hope I say this enough. I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Y'all are amazing. You're incredible. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be a tiny part of your day as we talk badgers together and we build this community. Let's talk about some things I don't love. Um, the first one is... Listen, this this happens every year. There's nothing you can do about it. Injuries. Like, there's been a couple so far. So, Muma got hurt. Uh, apparently not a big deal. It was reported he was in a sling. And then clarification came out that 
Uh, he had surgery. They hope to give him get him back in about a week, uh, you know, and they're going to take it easy on him. But that still is not, that's not good, right? It's better than worst case, but you still want Muma, who's going to be one of the centerpieces of your defense in a new defensive scheme with a new linebackers coach and a new defensive coordinator getting reps. You don't want him sitting on the sidelines. Like, he's going to be fine. You know, you start with Buffalo. They said he's going to be fine, but still not great. Chaz Malusi got banged up. Um, had a big hit with Kamoi Latu. So that's not great. When you're talking about specifically what are the two or three positions on this team that scare you the most if there's an injury. I'll, I'll let you think about it for a second. One of them's running back, right? <laughs> One of them is running back because you have Braylon and you have Chez, which we feel great about, both of whom have struggled with minor injuries over the entirety of their career. Minor to serious injuries, quite frankly, in Chez's case. So you have two players who have struggled to stay healthy. The last thing you want to hear is, any report of one of them getting dinged up in spring, um, even if it's minor, right? You, it makes you cringe a little bit because there's just not much behind those dudes. Um, the other spot that would terrify you is quarterback, right? If you're talking about positions the team cannot afford injuries to the, the key players at, it's running back and it's quarterback. And then I think there's depth everywhere else. I mean, you maybe you say tight end because of the the losses of Condiff, Eschenbach, but I think they're fine there. I think you have enough receivers that even if you lost some tight ends, Longo would, would adapt. They'd be fine, right? But you lose Mordecai, it's terrifying because you just don't know what you have behind him. And you lose Braylon or Chez, and there's just not a lot of proven depth. So hearing Chez get banged up, that's a little worrisome. Uh, Darian Varner's been banged up. He's back. Renfro's been banged up. He's back. But injuries are always painful. Hopefully, Moom is coming back soon. Hopefully, Chez is now for, for any noticeable time. Um, another one that's happened and has cropped up a little bit, it's worth talking about. There has been uh, quite a few quarterback interceptions, specifically from Locke. So, listen, two things. I I definitely am not that worried about, about Braden Locke. I want to start there. He's young. He's going to have turnovers. Uh, he's learning. Okay, I'm not that worried about him. Where I am potentially a little concerned, and it's what I just talked about, what if he's not really ready for this year? Right? And something happens to Tanner Mordecai. Is that a season ender? This this is where you you get a little worried hearing, you know, Braden Locke threw three picks in a practice, two bricks, picks in a practice, got replaced by Miles Burkett. You would listen, I, I'm not that worried about it. I, I want to stress it, but it's worth noting that. There's not much behind Tatter Mordecai, and a lot of quarterbacks don't make it through a season healthy. Um, so obviously not going to wood. It's a, it just is what it is, though. Quarterbacks get hurt in football just like every other position, and you would feel better about the depth there if you had reports of of Braden Locke looking great. Right, that's all I'll say. Um, I'm not overly worried about it. I'm not pushing any panic buttons. He's a young player. He's I think he's going to be fine. I like him a lot, actually. I've said that before in the show, but with the inability of Nick Evers to climb the depth chart. And we kind I feel like Miles Burkett is probably a safe player, but he's not the the physical type of player that Longo wants to run his offense. You have to hope that Braden Locke is ready this year if needed. Um, and that's it. That's kind of the, the what I've liked so far, what I don't like. Let's talk AJ Store. Let's get excited a little bit. Let's let's pump up the helium hype balloon and let it float away and watch it into go, you know, climb into the stratosphere, much like an AJ Store dunk climbing into the stratosphere. So AJ Store uh, playing on the Bahamas national team. They got two um, exhibition games in against Kansas. So you've probably seen, if you haven't, go check it out uh, on Twitter and a couple places. I think the Wisconsin basketball program themselves posted a clip of this. AJ Store uh, going up top, yamming a couple. He, he can fly, right? The the reports are as advertised. AJ Store is an athletic above-the-rim wing player, which, by the way, if, coming into the offseason, what do we say on the checklist? What do the Badgers got to do? Uh, athletic, okay, check. Wing player, okay, check. Um, someone that can get to the rim and create some pressure, okay, check. Check, check, check. AJ Store checks all those boxes. The first game against Kansas, 19 points, 8 rebounds. Um, here's the part that I really like. Those are both great, by the way. Kansas is one of the best teams in college basketball. The Bahamas team he's on right now is Eric Gordon, Buddy Heald, which I also love. I'm going to get into that for a second. He's playing with other NBA – or he's playing with real NBA dudes, which I absolutely love. But the key stat from A.J. Storr's first exhibition game against Kansas – again, let's not get carried away, but let's also not just ignore it. Nine out of ten from the free throw line. Absolutely love that. 
I'd love that stat because what have we talked about for like all of last year? The Badgers had nobody that could really put pressure on the rim, right? Nobody that could get those easy looks at the rim. AJ scored, AJ Store scored 19 points in that game and was 0 of 6 from 3. So that's good and bad, right? <laughs> like you, 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 wing players need to hit threes in today's game, but he scored 19 without hitting a three, which also shows you he's getting to the cup, right? He had 10 free throws in that game. There, there were games last year we were dying to get to the line at all, and we have we had nobody that could do it. You know, maybe a Crowell post up or Hepburn would get fouled a little bit, but Store's a guy who can get to the rim, put serious pressure on a defense because he'll go up and challenge them. And if he can do that consistently in the Big Ten, it opens up everything because getting to the free throw line opens up. I mean, hey, you're putting the other team in, in foul trouble. You are collapsing the defense where now you can kick it out to the shooters that are on this team. I think he's going to be such a stud. This is such a big get for the Badgers. So seeing him play really well in two exhibition games, um, the second one, he wasn't quite as quite as uh, strong. He was five of 11. Um Ended up averaging 15 points between the two games against Kansas. It was enough to excite me. I think. I think getting to the line, the athleticism he showed on the on the clips that are floating around. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be real good this year for the Badgers and Greg Guard. Just you wait. I'm excited about it. All right, let's take a quick break from from for our friends of the show. Come back. We have a bunch more comments that we want to get into, including some people that continue to disagree with me on the expansion talk. I'm all here for it. Um, so let, let's get into that next. Plus, why you don't got to be afraid of UCLA, Oregon, Washington. Like it's it's fine. We'll be fine. Let's talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break from our friends of the show. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Thank you for coming back to Lockdown Badgers. Really do appreciate it. Uh, let's just get some comments up here. This is from Matthew Berger. He said, uh, you should do a new Big Ten tier list with the new programs that were added. We're going to do that. We're going to try to do a really cool thing where multiple people get together. We're going to grade each program in the Big Ten on history, upside, football, basketball, um, geographical, you know, recruiting base. We haven't narrowed down the criteria yet, but we are going to do that. And I'm excited to see because I'm going to get several different viewpoints in on this. So I'm excited to see kind of what this tier list looks like, not just Wisconsin viewpoints. So uh, I'm excited about that one. Let's go to this one. Um, this is from Ross Kinsler. Adding Oregon and Washington makes the Big Ten a coast-to-coast -coast league. What else is a coast-to-coast -coast league? The NFL, he says. This is a great recruiting tool. You can tell them you can play coast-to-coast -coast just like you would in the NFL. I mean, I think anytime you raise the – the um, what am I thinking of? The excitement level, the hype. I'm I'm not thinking of the right word. I'm trying to think of, but of a pro of a conference, it, it helps. Going to help everybody in that conference recruit better. More money, more eyes, more viewership. Um, yeah, I, I would agree. And and going coast to coast, I would agree, Ross. It, it certainly is going to help the Big Ten recruit at an even higher level. This one is from Augustin Rocha. He says, "Anyone who's complaining, it's because they are scared of the teams that the Big Ten brought in. Stop it. Like this is this is." Where I have this is where I have to push back a little bit. When I talked about not being thrilled with Oregon and Washington coming in, it's because I wanted Notre Dame and Clem. Like I wanted not. I, I should be careful because uh, people push back and said you're underselling Oregon and Washington. Maybe I am a hundred percent. Those I did say those are really good programs. I have nothing against Oregon and Washington. Those are really good programs. Um, uh, really, really good programs. Okay. I'm not scared of Oregon, Washington, or UCLA. I'm sorry. Uh, USC is going to potentially be a monster in the Big Ten, but I'm not scared of those teams. I don't. I don't. Nobody's scared of UCLA. Let's start there. No, no Big Ten. I've, I haven't talked to anybody in the Big Ten that's like, oh my gosh, the Bruins are coming in. Uh, we we had our shot. Now nah, now the mighty Bruins are coming into the conference. Nobody, nobody's scared of UCLA. Like Oregon's going to be really good in the Big Ten, but they're not in a tier with Ohio State and Michigan. Maybe eventually they can get there. They're not there now. I I just don't uh, – I've seen a lot of fans start to get really worried and outside voices start to talk about how tough this is going to be for the rest of the Big Ten for this influx of Pac-12 schools. I think it's just USC that's going to be a bear for the Big Ten. And I think those other three schools coming in, they slot into a tier with Wisconsin and Iowa, which is a good tier. That's a good tier. I, I don't even think UCLA is in that tier, if we're being honest, if we're talking football. So – no, no, that, nobody's scared of of the teams they brought in outside of USC, Augustine. 
Um, let's go here. This is an interesting comment. I'm curious where people are on this. This is from Kyler Kill. He said, the Big Ten is far more competitive than the SEC. They have Georgia and Alabama. No one else, maybe LSU. Big Ten has eight schools that are all playoff caliber teams right now. I love the optimism, Kyler. I love it. The Big Ten does not have eight teams that are playoff caliber teams. Uh, you have, I mean, let's just go through them, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, tell me I'm wrong. Let, you have OSU. I would put Penn State in that tier, potentially. I would say Michigan for sure. I am okay putting USC in that tier because I think they're going to get there. That's four. I I mean, maybe if everything clicks right, Wisconsin this year, that's five. Who else are you putting in there if you think they have eight schools that are playoff caliber teams? It's not Iowa with that offense. It's not Michigan State. It's not Minnesota. <laughs> um, it's, it's not UCLA. If you're even if you're counting Oregon and Washington and Wisconsin, I'm only at seven, and I don't think Washington or Wisconsin is in that tier yet. So I would disagree. I also think the SEC is more competitive top to bottom than than the Big Ten. I, I I've said that for a while. Outside of Vanderbilt, really every SEC team gives a crap about football, right? And they're adding Texas and Oklahoma. There's a lot of Big Ten teams programs that, if we're being honest, does Illinois really give a crap about football i think they mostly do does northwestern probably not does rutgers nah. does maryland eh. does right like you can just kind of go down this list of schools that don't care about football as much as sec schools like minnesota i don't think the minnesota fan base in that program cares as much as an old miss or a, a mississippi state or an arkansas or a tennessee uh, i just don't see it i'm sorry i don't see it i think the SS sec is still a better football conference uh, let's keep going here. This is from Dustin. Go go look at the most watched teams in college football last 20 years, with or without Chip Kelly. Oregon has been a consistent top 10. Uh, they moved the needle. That's a fair point. Dustin, hats off. That's a fair point. Oregon, Oregon is a great program. Um, yeah, that's a fair point. Let's go here. This is from Doug Robinson. He said... You've said Stanford and Cal have been bad football programs recently, but saying Stanford, who regularly brings home the Director's Cup for best performance across all sports, is a bad athletics program means this channel is bewildering, bewilderingly, I can't pronounce the word, but I know what it is, bewilderingly ignorant. That's from Doug Robinson. First of all, um, I hate to just like, and this is no knock to anybody who follows all the, the Olympic sports, all the non-football and basketball sports. I love a lot of those sports. I really love watching volleyball. I used to coach women's basketball. I love women's basketball. Uh, you know, I I like a lot of those sports. I hate to break it to you, like nobody cares about the Directors Cup in the in the in the scope of conference realignment, right? I'm not belittling any of these sports or these athletes, any of whom could kick my butt at any of those sports that they play, but we're talking about this in the sphere of conference realignment through the lens of conference realignment. Nobody cares about the director's cup. Nobody cares about the other sports. Stanford wins. They don't, they don't move the needle at all. Not even like, not even a little, a hiccup of a needle, like the needle it, that it, it, like it is what it is. I'm not even saying it's great or that that's the way it should be, but that's the way it is. So don't, I'm so, like, I, again, I, I just they, those other things don't move the needle, and that's why. By the way, the proof is in the pudding. Why is Stanford still sitting out there if the Directors Cup is so important? Why is Cal still sitting out there? They have other sports as well. Like if if those things are so important, then why are those two schools who are located in fertile recruiting areas and have incredible academic resumes and gorgeous campuses and big alumni bases? Why are those two sitting on the bench while the Big Ten went and scooped out Washington and Oregon? Why? What's the answer? It's because their athletic program does isn't good enough. And their athletic program not being good enough boils down to football and basketball. And it's 95% football. So it is what it is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or good or bad. It just is what it is. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I had a lot of fun today. We got a bunch of contents coming up. Uh, we'll do we still have more positional previews, another a couple more coach interviews. I'm hoping to get a couple more recruits on that I'm working on. A bunch coming up this week. So hope that you guys stick with us on Wisconsin and let's talk tomorrow.